quarters we have been reproached for neglecting to portray the economic conditions which form the material basis of the present struggles between classes and nations. With set purpose we have hitherto touched upon these conditions only when they forced themselves upon the surface of the political conflicts. It was necessary beyond everything else to follow the development of the class struggle in the history of our own day and to prove empirically by the actual and daily newly created historical material that with the subjection of the working class accomplished in the days of February and March 1848, the opponents of that class, the bourgeois republicans in France and the bourgeois and peasant classes who were fighting feudal absolutism throughout the whole continent of Europe, were simultaneously conquered. That the victory of the quote moderate republic in France sounded at the same time the fall of the nations which had responded to the February Revolution with heroic wars of independence. And finally, that by the victory over the revolutionary working men, Europe fell back into its old double slavery, into the English-Russian slavery. The June conflict in Paris, the fall of Vienna, the tragic comedy in Berlin in November 1848, the desperate efforts of Poland, Italy and Hungary, the starvation of Ireland into submission. These were the chief events in which the European class struggle between the bourgeoisie and the working class was summed up, and from which we proved that every revolutionary uprising, however remote from the class struggle its object might appear, must of necessity fail until the revolutionary working class should have conquered that every social reform must remain a utopia until the proletarian revolution and the feudalistic counter-revolution have been pitted against each other in a worldwide war. In our presentation, as in reality, Belgium and Switzerland were tragicomic, caricaturish genre pictures in the great historic tableau. The one the model state of the bourgeois monarchy, the other the model state of the bourgeois republic, both of them states that flatter themselves to be just as free from the class struggle as from the European Revolution. But now, after our readers have seen the class struggle of the year 1848 develop into colossal political proportions, it is time to examine more closely the economic conditions themselves upon which is founded the existence of the capitalist class and its class rule, as well as the slavery of the workers. We shall present the subject in three great divisions. The relation of wage labour to capital, the slavery of the worker, the rule of the capitalist. The inevitable ruin of the middle classes, petty bourgeois, and the so-called commons, peasants, under the present system. The commercial subjugation and exploitation of the bourgeois classes of the various European nations by the despot of the world market. England. We shall seek to portray this as simply and popularly as possible, and shall not presuppose a knowledge of even the most elementary notions of political economy. We wish to be understood by the workers. And, moreover, there prevails in Germany the most remarkable ignorance and confusion of ideas in regard to the simplest economic relations, from the patented defenders of existing conditions down to the socialist wonder workers and the unrecognised political geniuses in which divided Germany is even richer than in duodecimo princelings. We therefore proceed to the consideration of the first problem. End of chapter one.